hello and thank you for joining us for worship. You know, in this time of pandemic, when we are not worshiping in our buildings because they remain closed, we get a fabulous opportunity to worship God in the splendor of his beauty of creation. So I can think of no better place to worship God today than in the beauty of this garden. So come along with me and let's see what God has in store for us today. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Keep, O Lord, your household, the church, in your steadfast faith and love, that through your grace we may proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion. For the sake of our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us turn now for the readings appointed for today. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Israelites had journeyed from Rephidim, entered the wilderness of Sinai, and camped in the wilderness. Israel camped there in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the Israelites, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings, and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession out of all the peoples. Indeed, the whole earth is mine, but you shall be for me a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the Israelites. So Moses came, summoned the elders of the people, and set before them all the words that the Lord had commanded him. The people all answered as one, Everything that the Lord has spoken, we will do. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Psalm 100. Be joyful in the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with the song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are the people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his faithfulness endures from age to age. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, 
he had compassion for them because they were harassed and were helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You receive without payment, give without payment. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I'm here today and I wanted to offer this sermon here in the beautiful garden of our columbarium. You know, history and culture are full of great mentors, whether they are athletes, or artists, leaders, or teachers. They all tell the story of guiding, coaching, and crafting opportunities to pass their skills to their students and followers. I mean, think about the movies like Star Wars and the relationship between Yoda and the young Luke Skywalker. Or if you're not a Star Wars fan, then maybe Professor Dumbledore and Harry Potter. Or better yet, The Karate Kid, where Mr. Miyagi teaches Daniel more than just how to defend himself, but how to find balance and strength and responsibility in all aspects of his life. Whatever the context, the master-apprentice relationship is a special one, for sure. It is a partnership where the apprentice, over time, learns to become a master. And sometimes, the teacher is even recognizable in the craft of his or her student. Perhaps this is nowhere more striking than in today's gospel. In our story, Jesus has been busy about his mission, preaching, teaching, and healing. And here, having compassion on the gravity of the need of the crowds that stand before him, he commissions his followers to help him carry out his mission and ministry. There is a sense of urgency in his voice. He tells them, the kingdom of heaven is near. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. The language used to commission the disciples, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the leper, and cast out demons. Don't they sound familiar? They are a mirror image of Jesus' own work of curing every disease and every sickness. It's, it's like a mentor passing the mantle from Jesus' own ministry of teaching, preaching, and healing to that of his students. So what can we make of all that? 
why is any of this important for us today? It's important because Matthew, in the way that he writes, the perspective that he takes, his list of followers is not limited just to Simon and Andrew and James and Thomas and all of the other first century disciples. The list includes your name and my name as well. And we are expected to take after or to bear some resemblance of Jesus in word and deed. As one writer put it, to be sent by Jesus is to be sent as Jesus. Now we don't have to look very hard to see that the harvest, the needs confronting our country and our world today are more than plentiful. In fact, they're downright overflowing. Jesus is calling us and sending us out to be full of compassion, to heal and to cast out and to cure every disease and every sickness of any kind. If you could imagine Jesus sending you out today, to cure the sick, to raise the dead, to cleanse the lepers, and to cast out demons. Where or to whom would you go? Where do you see illness? Who is in need of cleansing? And what is your good news to share? I imagine that we would each come up with different answers to these questions. And that's okay. We hear and respond to God's voice, God's call in our lives differently. And we are called to different kinds of work. Frederick Buechner says it in this beautiful and poetic way, and I, I know I have said this before, that the place that God calls you to is the place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet. This means that the kind of work God usually calls you to is the kind of work that you need most to do and that the world most needs to have done. And if you are worried that you aren't up to the task, or that you don't have what it takes to do the work that God has given you to do, my friends, that's okay. You're in good company because these first disciples didn't either. We just look at the list. Peter, the rock, will deny Jesus three times. Judas will betray him. Matthew is a tax collector who works for the Roman government. And Simon the Zealot works against the government. And yet, Jesus entrusted them. And Jesus entrusts us today with his own work and his own ministry. And we are never alone in this. Jesus not only called those first disciples, but has called disciples in every generation even those who surround me here in the columbarium. They answered Jesus' call in their own day. And if we feel lost in what to do, if we're unsure of how to respond, all we need to do is remember them and follow their example. My friends, the kingdom of heaven is near. The harvest is plentiful, and our risen Lord is calling us forth to be laborers with him. Amen. Prayers of the People Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, 
for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Jennifer, our bishop, for Mauricio and the Diocese of Brasilia, for Trinity Lawrenceburg, the Reverend Mary Traflinger, and for the Church in the Province of Myanmar, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be peace and justice on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that, we, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, especially those on our prayer list. For Stephanie, Phyllis, Terry, Steve, Dave, Eric, Ashley, Brian, Dan, Jerry, Susan, Josh, Steve, Scott, and Adrian, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us now pray for our own needs and for those of others. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone we have not loved you with our whole heart we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves we are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your son jesus christ have mercy on us and forgive us our sins that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Together now, we pray the act of reception. In union, blessed Jesus, with the faithful gathered at every altar of thy church, where thy blessed body and blood are being offered this day, I long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and the hope of glory. I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. And since I cannot at this time receive communion, I pray you to come into my heart. I unite myself with you and embrace you with all my heart, my soul, and my mind. Let nothing separate me from you. Let me serve you in this life until by your grace, I come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. Let us now pray as Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus, and dwell in my heart, in the fullness of your strength. Be my wisdom and guide me in right pathways. Conform my life and actions to the image of your holiness, and in the power of your gracious might. Rule over every hostile power that threatens or disturbs the growth of your kingdom, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my body and soul unto everlasting life. Amen. Together, let us say the act of thanksgiving. Blessed, praised, hallowed, and adored be Jesus Christ on his throne of glory in heaven and in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Amen. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O oh, good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Let me never be separated from you. From the evil one, protect me. At the hour of my death, call me and bid me to come to you, that with your saints I may praise you forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you again for joining us for worship. We wish you a most blessed and holy day. Take care.